Hello everybody, so this is my first YouTube video. My sister seems to think that I should record tutorials of pouring resin for you guys. So she's asked me for a project, I'm going to record that for you. Um, it's going to be something different because as usual my sister, my older sister Laura likes to give me a challenge and she says to me I have a customer who likes armadillos and pigeons and her favourite colour is green. Please can you do something unique? I need to clean this mould. Um, the beginning bit is going to be quite easy, quite basic um, because all I'm going to do is pour a green layer on the bottom of this mould uh, using apple green mica powder this is from Amazon, they come in quite a big set um, and they're not too bad I've found that they do move quite well sorry I'm struggling finding the end of the sour tape as you do and you have not finally got the end of the tape all I'm going to do is get any bits of fluff and dust this is a brand new mould but I did take it out of the packet so it's just been sat in the room gathering bits of dust and things so we just gently get them out you don't want to be too rough you don't want to scratch your mould on the very first go because that will leave marks in your resin because you're pouring a liquid that sets it just tends to take on any marks any dust so if your mold is scratched your resin will take on that sorry if it's noisy in the background i do have a dehumidifier running it's only a little one for this room but you don't want any moisture um, in your resin, getting in your resin that causes a mean bloom or a mean blush which is like a sticky horrible layer over it I've had it quite a few times and I really don't want that so I have a dehumidifier um, I also have a heat mat this board is on show you it's like little stilts and you can turn it so that it goes up or down and you can level your table or your board in my case quite easily with these um, you have little sticks stuck to the bottom of this board to stop them from sliding because it's like being on stilts <laughs> You don't want to knock your board when you have a piece of resin setting up. Um, believe me, I've done it. And then your resin runs away and it's all over. And it's panic stations. So, yeah, pop sticks to hold them in. I'll show you what I do to level it in a little bit. Actually, that's not touching the board at all there. So, I have a very little spirit level and to level your table, there's a bubble in the middle for anybody that doesn't know how to level anything and what I'm going to do is it's tilted this way towards me so if I was to pour resin in this mould it would run straight towards me 
instead of staying centered so I'm turning this foot to the right to make it higher same with this one As I said previously, I'm giving it a green bottom layer because my sister's friend's favourite colour is green, so we're going with apple green. That mic powder is from Amazon, um, and that's just literally for the first layer. Then, what I'm going to do is I've dried these flowers, roses mostly, in um, silker beads. This is taken two days roughly to dry using a uh, wise dry orange silk gel. Now these come in a bead form and they start out that orangey colour, don't know if you can see, but once they have taken on all of the moisture they can take they go a bluey brown that's only a little bit of one whoops yeah so they go a bluey browny colour now what's good about this silker bead is that you can actually put it in the microwave and or the oven and we can reuse look a gel the powder is it all gets stuck in the bottom here in these petals it's actually quite difficult to get out I've been sat there before now with a little paint soft paintbrush trying to brush it all out and as you can see they're quite fragile because they have been dried so when you're trying to brush out a little bit of gel it can get quite interesting shall we say you don't really want to take uh, any of the petals off when you're working with it after you've just spent two days trying to dry it out. Apologies, I've got a couple of beads stuck in there. Now, you might not think that it's a problem. I've not actually experienced any issues, but I also, here we go haven't left any beads stuck in. Now I've been doing resin for maybe a year or so, just got my first kit, ordered my first kit in first lockdown and um, been doing it ever since. I use a company called Ruba which is a UK company um, and I use their art ranges. Today I'll be using Vista Lake. Go and get it. So this is part A. This is the resin part. I've had it sat in hot water for. 20 minutes or so because unfortunately our country gets can get quite cold um, and that can cause problems with the resin setting up again I mean bloom, I mean blush, it's like an oily sticky layer on your resin and it's quite difficult to get rid of. I will do a tutorial on how to solve that problem um, on another time. I need to make something having a mean bloom or blush before I can do that. Now Mixing your resin, 
I want to start off with about 300 grams. Uh, this still lake is a two to one resin, so to mix up two, 300 grams, sorry, you want 200 grams of part A, which is a lovely blue colour. We've started doing that recently. And 100 grams of part B and that will make up your 300 grams because it is 2 to 1 so 200 of A is 2, 100 of B is 1, 2 plus 1 is 3. I do use, I try and reuse them as well, nitrile gloves have a respirator for when mixing the resin. Um, you can find any PPE information on the website. You can also download what is called an MSDS sheet and that will give you any information you need whether the resin is toxic if you do need to wear a mask, this to do suggest that you wear your PPE, so we are going to wear it. I need my scales. I weigh my resin. Purely because <clears throat> it's easier, it's more accurate when you're measuring resin. This particular one, Ruba, says to measure it, you need to measure, if you was to do 150 grams, you need to do 100 grams of A and 60 grams of B, which is fine, but on all your little measuring cups and... Ooh, everything like that doesn't really have a good indicator. I mix my resin in one jug together. Um, what you can do is obviously measure if you was to do 150 grams, 60 grams here. Uh, sorry, mils isn't it? So 60 mils here and 100 mils there and then put them two together but I tend to mix it in one jug so measuring weighing it is easier got a nice big I've actually started using silicone jugs and cups rather than plastic ones uh, they're easier to clean what I usually do to clean them is leave any residue resin in the bottom and then leave a, a stick popsicle stick in until it sets up and then just squeeze the jug to get any residue out, loosen it up and then pull the popsicle stick and that usually pulls the majority of it out. But as I say I've started using silicone cups to make that process a bit easier. So I'm going to mix some resin. I need to move these flowers out of the way because we're not ready for them but as you can see they're all dried out and pretty. I'm going to pour the first layer and then place them in the resin start getting them set up but first I need to move them in the way I don't want to damage them okay so this time round I'm not going to put my respirator on I know naughty but I do want to talk you through the resin and weighing it. 
so for this one time I won't use my respirator I want to do 300 grams as I've said before so need a bit of tissue because there's in sticky and messy and you don't really want it everywhere so 200 grams of A Vista Lake this is a deep pouring resin turned off there so I want to get this mixed and one of the things that we say don't know if I can show you is to mix it for around four minutes or until there are no swirl lines I don't think you can see there so it leaves like little lines where the unmixed resin and hardener swirls about until you've got it fully mixed and then it will go crystal clear once it's fully mixed as well. Okay, seems okay. I'm going to give that a few minutes for the bubbles to release. Won't bore you, I'll be back in a few. Okay, so all the little bubbles you see have moved into the centre. I'm just going to lightly blast them with my torch. Woo! That's not happened before. Something set on fire. <laughs> Try again. Just like I say, just gently blast the bubbles out. They will still keep rising. But I need to mix the apple green mica powder. Now I use this little spoon. It did come with these powders. Actually no, I think it came with a different set of pipettes and things. Your resin can hold 10% of any additive. Before we get started today, I just want to show you my setup, shall we say, putting the resin to bed. So last night after I finished, I put this tote over it to stop any dust or anything from flying in it. I have a little hole there with my thermometer in and a thermostat over there to regulate the temperature. So it should stay at around 20 degrees. Under here is my heat mat, which keeps the temperature warm, and my little feet and popsicle sticks that I spoke to you about yesterday. Okay, I'm gonna get started. Okay, I've uncovered the resin, and I don't know if you can see there. 
some light on it. It's pulled from the outside in as I explained and it's left us some lovely patterns around the edge. We've also got the mag powder bunch together in the centre, that's quite common. That's where it finishes upsetting. But these patterns around the edge are quite nice. So what I might try and do is get the flowers around the edge but still see that pattern. We'll see what we can do though. First of all, I need to mix my resin. Okay, I do have my respirator on so I apologise if I am not very clear. Um, I've allowed the resin now to sit for a few minutes whilst I sorted some storage out on my phone so the bubbles should have released. Just tap last them to get rid of them. Okay, is crystal clear it is really good. Now I've brought over my flowers to show you again and this is what we're going to do now because the flowers obviously have a lot of petals we want to try and get the resin in them petals uh, so that we don't miss anything it's all encased in the resin What I'm going to try today is use a pipette and get in between all there before I put it in here. Okay. I'll just suck a lot of it up. And then over here I'm just going to get right in there. And we probably will get very messy. doing it in multiple layers I'm going to add hopefully different things so this layer is going to have a bit of glitter the next layer I'm thinking about swirling in some white paste to give it a bit of a smoky effect on the next layer but with this now I'm just going to pour it in starting to get warm because I've been working for a while so I'll just pour it in five flowers now it shouldn't matter too much that i haven't covered all of the flowers with the resin straight away um i will on the next layer obviously carry on covering them um but provided they don't float which they shouldn't because i've not put too much resin in they should set up like this and then we can just carry on pouring on if you are going to torch, just be super careful about it. Um, don't stay in one area for too long. 
the resin will adhere to your mould if you're not careful. So. Right, I'm going to wait for some bubbles to come up and I will be back to show you the next layer. See you later. Hello everybody. We are on day number three of this resin pour. Um, the second layer of clay is all nicely uh, set up. Flowers are still soft where we didn't put resin on so we're going to try and cover that today just give it a nice layer to make it all hard um i've got my resin mixed up here already i didn't want to bore you with that again just letting the bubbles release give them a blast I have got my respirator on, so apologies if I'm not very clear. What I want to do with this layer is add just another little dash of glitter, a little blub, as it was yesterday. Yep, there we go. And then I'm hoping to do some sort of cloudy smoky effects with some white pigment we'll see how that goes just mixing in this glitter so it's all the way through the resin the smoky effect for uh, maybe a couple more layers so that's it for today guys 300 grams of resin 200 part a 100 part b using vista lake again um i do like to try and come in earlier it's been 24 hours each time i would really like it to be eight because the resin bonds better when it's not fully set what I'm hoping to not get is like join lines on the side but I don't know if I will or won't get that because I am leaving it longer due to work and I'm just going to sit and wait for any more bubbles to rise but that's day number three, four number three I'll see you again soon hello again guys I've got you at yet another camera angle trying to record you on different things saving space memory on my tablet and phone I've already got 300 grams of resin mixed up this is day number four uh, of this project what I want to do today is just literally pour the resin on and over the flowers again but as I said to you previously, I'm going to try and do a smoky effect. So what I want to do is get the bubbles out. Okay, don't try not to burn your resin. Pour a tiny bit in this little cup. Just a little tiny bit. Don't need a lot at all. Let me, uh, I'm using Supreme White from just the online. 
because I'm working with the resin I have only just finished mixing it I'm literally just mixing that white into that resin as you can see it's only I've used this cup before but it's only a little bit okay. You'll see why it's only so little in a minute. and then pigment paste from just be one line mixed in it's just white I'm going to use this stick hopefully just start introducing some more it's a bit too much Okay, just start introducing a bit of smoke, hopefully. I'm just dipping it in the resin a bit and dragging through. I need to come up this way. <laughs> take over I've only put the smallest amount in and as I said these flowers aren't quite these ones the taller ones in particular I think this one's okay now I think that's covered these aren't so I just tried to get the white pigment around them right that's it for now I'll let this set up thank you for your time see you tomorrow hi everybody so I just want to show you a close up of this um, obviously I put the white in it yesterday and you can see sort of here what I was trying but it's not really come out that bright again there look so I think I'm gonna try again today yeah, look there a little bit and uh, see if we can make that more stand out more I might start right at the edge here so it doesn't pull so far in because that's what it's basically done it's gone from the 
I put it here, didn't I? And it's just pulled it in to the centre there. But I'm going to be covering up this this centre piece, not all of it. But I'll be putting a picture in. So I'm going to get my resin mixed and I'll be back shortly. Okay, I'm back. So I have 300 grams of resin mixed up here. Um, three seems to be the lucky number for this mould. Yeah, if you can see the little bubbles sitting on top where I've been allowing it to degas. So we're just going to get rid of them. It should then be nice and crystal clear. Okay. I've changed the angle again. I'm just working with it at the moment, trying to figure out what's best for you guys. I've got a little ring light here, but it is kind of showing right in the centre. But what it's doing is it's showing up all the lovely glitter. Can't see my hand, can you? <laughs> um, so yeah, see all these shiny bits, especially in the middle showing up all the glitter. I was thinking about putting some lights in this because you can just turn that off. It's not really making much of a difference. Um yeah you can put like fairy lights and things in um but I think for this particular project it might be too much because of all the flowers and the glitter and like I say I'm going to try and get some more of the smoky effect to stay at the edges but not cover up that pattern that we got at the very beginning so this is now quite clear not really too many bubbles what I'm going to do is a little bit of white again just a tiny tiny amount in the cup. I've pulled all the resin out the bottom. Leave that in there for a minute. Now I might be able to show you how much glitter I've actually been putting in from this angle. Just move everything over a bit. Let's see. Yeah, that's not bad. You'll have to let me know what's your favourite angle. So just a little whoop. yeah that's all it is just to give it a little bit of a nicer effect stir stick already pre-resined stir that in now stuff over at the same time so again just for you online supreme white and again just the tiniest of little bits where's that gone uh, there we go. I am a little bit of a messy worker, but 
everything's usually in its place to use one of them, didn't I? So a tiny bit. Can't really move this now because I've got it. You can do this without mixing it in the resin as well. But you're running the risk of it being too strong and the white just taking over. So I do like to mix it in a tiny, it's just a little tiny bit. And I probably won't even use all of that resin. But I want to use a bit more than I did yesterday because it's just not, I mean can you even see the the smoky effects. I don't think we can. Okay, that's well mixed in now. I'm not sure. I wonder if I can zoom in. Mm. Close. Either way, I've got your face, so I can't zoom you in. Okay, so that's it, just like that. Yeah. Can you see? Like I say, I want to make it a bit stronger today. So today, I'm hoping we are on our final layer. Um, I think we're on day number six, something like that. Um, some of these flowers are still poking out just a tiny bit. The cloud effect does seem to have worked. I'll give you a close up of that. Um, let's see, I can show you. In there, it is better. Can you see? It's in there. So, I'm quite happy with that this time. It is only supposed to be faint because it's supposed to be smoky, so it's better. Now, as I said, I was going to put a picture in this, but I would like to try something a bit different. This is actually printed on uh, decal paper, water slide decal paper. So it's like the stuff that you get for uh, children and fake tattoos. Um, <clears throat> and you basically, I'm hoping, 
put the picture on, wet it with the cloth and then transfer the picture. This is the picture here. I think that's actually just a pin. I think that's the picture there. So it's going to go in the centre. I've not made it too big. I didn't want to take away from the flowers because they are so pretty. So hopefully it just sits in a nice area there. I'm going to go and get a cloth and see if we can do this. Okay, so I've just got a damp cloth. It's only a little bit damp. I don't really want to soak the resin if I can help it. I'm not sure if this is going to work. This is new to transferring it onto resin. It did transfer onto my glass windows when I did Halloween printouts. So I'm hoping it, it will stick. Just check the position. I have measured, as you can see I've got my ruler and I have measured sort of roughly where I would like it to go. Um, I do want it central but not covering too many flowers. Now this decal paper is a clear one so don't know how well the picture will actually show up. Let's see if I can get it to transfer first. Um, if it doesn't work, then I do have a different idea. But I'm really hoping this works, to be honest with you. It would be miles easier. I might need to wet that a bit more. Right, that's better. So I'm just literally damping this down and fingers crossed that it transfers because if not then I'm going to have to cut the picture out here see if I can laminate it and then stick it down it's just a whole different process so that's sliding now but it does say it's um, inkjet <coughs> inkjet water slide decal paper from Mr Decal Paper it's off Amazon Everything I get off Amazon. Right. See if this has worked. Hmm. So as you can see, it's just more like a silhouette so that we can still see the flowers underneath once the resin goes on it will just see that that's good definitely good it's working everybody <laughs> Get my resin one minute, it's in a hot water bath as usual. It's cold. Right, so I've been and got my resin out of its hot water bath and mixed it up. It's here 300 grams again. But today I've decided to use the Cascade, again, it's a two to one. The reason for that is it's a faster setting resin. I want to try and get this project finished today. I've made sure that this is dry whilst we've been waiting for the bubbles to release. You don't want any water in the resin because that causes problems in the inlay and the washers I spoke about before. 
I do believe it can make your resin cloudy as well. So it's just a big no-no for water really. Now, don't want to add any glitter to this layer. I think we've got enough throughout the other layers. Um, and I'm hoping if I can dome this, it will make it magnified, shall we say, if we give it a convex effect on the top. I hope it will magnify the effects in the resin. So we're literally just going to get to pouring this and waiting for it to set. I hope 300 grams is enough to finish this off. I'm not certain. Let's see, shall we? I can wait for it to set up and add another layer, which I think I'm going to do. Probably needed about another one or two hundred grams um, to finish this piece off. This flower here is still poking up a tiny bit. This one here is now set in the resin. Um, so in a, in a few hours, I'll probably come back in and uh, set this up again, just with another 100 grams. I might not show you that because it's just literally pouring resin on top. Got a few bubbles. They've all congregated to the middle. So, again, I'm going to sit and wait for any bubbles to come up off the piece. I won't wait with you. I'll just keep blasting them until they're all gone. I am really happy with this. I'm so happy that that turned out how it has. It is a bit cloudy where the uh, decal paper is clear, but it does give a nice sort of mirage effect. So, yeah, I'm re really happy. Like I say, I just need to add a bit more um, to, to properly fill this up. I do want it to dome because what happens when the resin sets, as I previously said, it pulls in and when it does that on the edges of your mould it tends to leave like a well um, where it's pulled in from the edges and it leaves a dip on the sides so I want it to be domed. So I need that extra resin to do that. Like I say, I probably should have really mixed up maybe even 500 grams rather than three. Um, maybe even more, I'm not sure yet. So it's a really, it's quite a big, big piece. So yeah, I'll come back and do that later. Uh, and hopefully soon reveal the results. See you soon. Hello everybody. So after I finished earlier I obviously said that I didn't have enough resin. It's um, quite a few hours after now. I think it's like what 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15, 15, about seven or eight hours, something like that. Um I've come back in to pour on some more so that I can dome this because um, I don't want that lip around the edge I don't want to be having to sand it and buff it and make it shiny again so I do find the easiest ways to top coat it and dome it um, so I've got mixed up here 200 grams of resin hopefully that's going to be enough and on my phone here how I've calculated that is uh, Vuba do actually have a resin calculator so it makes it miles easier to work out when you have a 2 to 1 resin say 200 grams is 133 of part A 
and 66 of part B. So it's miles easier to work that out for you. you just go on their website if you're using this resin. Um, take that off now. My resin's been sitting, I've just finished mixing it, it's been sitting whilst I've been talking to you. I'm just waiting for some more bubbles to release and then I'm literally just going to pour it on and hopefully show you the dome. Oh, and here, oh, hair in the top coat. Thank you. There it go. I want it to be perfect and shiny, no hairs in it. So yes. Okay. I've just got micro bubbles in there now. Which they're easy enough, they come up easy. Literally had like a, a spot left. See, the 200 grams was right. So the mixed 500 before to finish this off. So I bring you down to have a look, shall I? See what I mean by dome? Oh, is me. Now it's a little ridge right on the edge. That's nicely domed now. And obviously this is the top. The smoky effect there. And a little armadillo and pigeon. <laughs> and then lovely. You just look across the top. Oh, it's got that ridge. You push that much more that it'll overflow. Okay, so this should be set up by tomorrow. Tomorrow night, I'll we'll probably take this out and show you what it looks like out of the mould. It's stunning now, I'm really excited to see how it's finished. Hmm. <laughs> Look how many join lines I've got on the side, you can't see it there. But I reckon there's some. That's because I couldn't come in in time to, to do it when I wanted because of work and family commitments. Okay. See. Morning everybody. So, I've come in to check the resin after work. Um and for some reason I seem to get a lot of micro bubbles I don't know if it's because of the thing the paper I used for the picture um, but when you get a lot of micro bubbles like that it's giving it that sticky I mean bloom I'm really gutted because I was hoping that it was finished for you guys it's probably a good thing because it now means I can show you how to sort this. The only problem is I pushed this mould 
yesterday when I poured the resin um, probably as far as I can go for the dolmen I might be able to push it a tiny bit more whilst I'm talking to you I've got the resin warming up I really need to go to bed to be honest I work nights but I want to get this setting up and I want to show you how to fix the problem so initially I'm going to wash this with warm soapy water and then obviously dry it because you don't want water in your resin and then I'm going to use a really fast setting resin it's called Vista Turbo probably sets up within about eight hours and it helps to prevent the amine bloom or blush because it sets up so fast it doesn't allow the amines to come up because it sets quickly so that's what I'm going to try and do and hope <laughs> that I don't push this too far I'm only going to make up a little bit just to literally cover this and I'm probably going to try and pick off these bits of overflow as well so whilst my resin's warming up I'm going to do that um, pick these bits off and then I'll show you how to wash it again I don't really want to pick them off because if I pull this out of the mould I'll be uh, upset if I get run off down the edge but I also don't want it running off the edge where this is. got a tiny bit of soapy water it is soapy it's a bit of dish soap washing up liquid it just breaks down that sticky layer and I'm literally just gonna scrub it and it also doesn't set sometimes if it's really bad I actually take my little knife and I gouge it out it's not that bad it's just right on the surface just don't think I need to do that just drying it off now making sure it's all dry I've got 100 grams of resin made up there, that's probably too much thinking about it, but I was rushing. Um, I'm using Vista Turbo, uh, it uses um, Cascade Part A and the hardener is the actual Turbo. I did speak to uh, Vuber about that because it made me worry at first having I ordered quite a lot at the same time and I had two lots of Cascade and only one part of Turbo and I'm thinking oh no they've sent me the wrong thing must have been there okay it's not too sticky now anyway I messaged them and spoke to them and they said no 
the cascade is the correct part um, but they're going to look into <coughs> labelling it up a bit differently um, so that it's not as confusing like I say I have tried quite a few of their resins and they all come labelled up appropriately but this is quite a new, a new resin for them it sets up really fast so you don't really want to hang about I'm just going to blast the bubbles I've only just finished mixing it but I really want to get a move on I really wanted to be showing you this unmoulding it today but telling you not to do it and I bet you I do it and then I'll be super annoyed. Right, I'm gonna sit and pop bubbles. See you later. Hi everybody. So this is all set up. I've covered it over so you don't see. I know you've pretty much seen it all the way through but it's finished. I'm so excited. It's so stunning. Are you ready? We're gonna get this bad boy out and have a proper look. Yeah, let's have a look. Ta -da! Look at how beautiful the top is. Shiny. You ready? Let's have a look. Oh, wow. I'm so happy. It's one of the biggest but prettiest pieces I've ever done. I've never done anything of this weight. It's huge. <laughs> And it's set up gorgeous. Thank you, Turbo, for saving the day. See if we can get it out. Ooh, let's hope it unmolds. Whoops. Don't want it to be stuck. Don't want to have gone too far at all with the torch because that would be disastrous. And I'll be really upset. Ooh, look at it. Chili weighs so much. Might even get me scales on it. You ready? It's come out. It's coming out perfect. Yes, it didn't stick, not in a single spot. Um, few, very faint drawing lines. You can see where I've put the cascade and then the turbo, but that's my goodness. Look at it. Got a little bit of overflow here, but that's because I, I really pushed really pushed the resin got a little bubble there but it's on the back wow wow oh, what do you think tell me what you think oh i'm going to show you what i do to get rid of this i actually have a deburring tool and just slowly Take off that overflow. So just a little bit. Start off with a tiny bit. Scrape it off. Like that. 
I'm going to go around and do this. And then once I've finished, I'll take some pictures of it for you. But what do you think? I can't even fit it in the shot. Alright, I'm going to get to taking this off and then I'll uh, take some pictures of it, but I'm so happy with that. Let me know what you think guys. Thanks for watching. Bye!